I gave myself a week to reimagine Rocket League as a first person shooter game. Thankfully, I'm already working on a first person shooter game, so I didn't have to start from scratch, but instead I created this useful folder that probably should have existed in my project months ago. The first thing I wanted to do was understand how to work with balls. Um, in Unity. I created a sphere and made it a rigid body so that it would understand physics, and assigned it something called a physics material, which allows you to give the object some bounciness. And just like that, I had a third functioning ball, one of which obeys the laws of Unity-defined physics. The ultimate character controller allows me to assign different impact velocities to different weapons. When shooting the ball with an assault rifle, a lower velocity will be applied to it, but when shooting at it with a shotgun, a higher impact velocity will be applied. And when shooting at it with a rocket, well, you get the point. I think this will make for some interesting mechanics once we've built a stadium and some goals. I like to make things look nice as early as possible. It makes me feel like I'm progressing. So I started by decorating my ball. In Blender, I created a sphere and cut out a part of it to make it look a bit more interesting. I modeled this thingy and attached it to the side of the ball. In Substance Painter, I slapped on some textures and just like that, we have a Rocket League ball that kind of looks like it came from Wish, but that's okay. I like it. According to this really interesting comment on a seven-year-old Reddit post by the Psionic CEO Dave Haywood. The Rocket League Arena is approximately 375 by 300 meters. What this means for me is absolutely nothing, because I'm just gonna wing it. After these four failed attempts at making a shell of a stadium, Car Football Racing Stadium Pack asset on the store was starting to look really appealing. But I took a break, thought about it for a while, and decided to make better use of modifiers. I modeled these three simple pieces, added this Bezier curve, and applied some mirror and curve modifiers, and boom, a Rocket League stadium was born. I modeled some goals and brought everything into Unity to get a feel for the scale of things. I realized immediately that, well, my character is not a car, and as such, isn't really able to get around the stadium quickly enough for things to feel fluid and fun. Staying true to Rocket League, I decided a good solution would be to implement my version of boost pads. Yes, this cube is a boost pad, but when you pick it up, you gain access to a dash. With the dash functionality working nicely, I replaced the cube with a sphere and repurposed the same clampy thingy that can be found on the side of the ball as a boost pad. I generated a noisy texture in Substance Designer and made a simple shader that scrolls the texture forever and emits some light to make things look a little cooler. Now, all that was left to do was to place the boost pads all over the field to drastically improve the player's mobility. I like that this introduces some strategy and you'd need to plan your route through the field to get around quickly. And as a bonus, you get some interesting results when dashing into the ball. At this point, the blandness of the stadium was starting to mess with my morale. I got cracking on the field and found this decent grass texture on the Substance Asset Store. I slapped it on the field and introduced some tiling. This was a good start, but I wanted to introduce some detail as well. I created a couple different textures in Substance Designer and made this messy shader graph which combines it all into this final result. This was a really useful exercise, and I learned about channel packing, which is when you pack different grayscale textures into one output texture, which is a great optimization and space saver. Rocket League is known for its difficult to master mechanics, which include lots of in-air plays and fancy twirly business. But seeing as though I'm already two weeks into my allocated one week of tangent time, I just made it so that you can run on walls. And the roof. I spent a little more time on a texture to use for the ramps in the stadium. I tried my best to recreate one from the game in Substance Designer, and I think it turned out okay. An important lesson I learned here was that it's important to make objects that you want to tile a texture onto a perfect square, so that it unwraps onto the entire available UV area. This makes it much easier to texture. I definitely need to figure out how to make my substance graphs a bit cleaner, though applying this to the stadium looks pretty neat. It could do it some variation, but that sounds like way too much effort. I made some repeating hexagonal textures for the walls, the roof ramp, and the roof, and some admittedly awful textures for the goalposts, but at this point, things are looking pretty good. To track goals scored, I added some colliders inside the goalposts, set them up as triggers, and wrote some code that fires an event when the ball collides with them. Then I created a match manager class that subscribes to the events and allocates a goal to the team that scored. 
I created a scoreboard, a countdown timer, and some goal explosions that activate when the ball collides with the goals. I scattered a bunch of weapons all over the field and removed the player's default loadout. I think this would be a nice way to create more strategy. The player can pick up either an assault rifle, shotgun, or rocket launcher and needs to watch their ammo closely because pickups give you a limited amount. As a start, I decided I'd create some AI to test the game out with. I used Behavior Designer on the character and created some bots that are probably much worse than the bots you'd find in Rocket League. The purpose of their existence is to shoot the ball, and when they run out of ammo, to go collect more and shoot the ball some more. They would be the epitome of a ball chaser, with no idea how to shoot the ball toward the goal, but that's okay, it should be enough to test things out with. I added a start game timer and placed all the characters in their relevant starting positions. I thought about adding multiplayer but at this point we're a month into the allocated week of tangent time so maybe if this video gets more than my usual 100 views I'll think about adding it in. Besides, I had a little too much fun messing around with this AI, probably got a bit carried away. All in all, I think it was a pretty useful tangent and I think I've improved many aspects of my game dev skills. I think it's about time I get back to working on my actual game though.